Welcome to Alex Juice Aquarium, everybody. Today is going to be another Q&A video on the 1600 gallon system. I went ahead and I took a few of the questions that have come up either in comments, on forums, or questions that people have asked me in person about the 1600 gallon system. I just want to take a little time just to address those questions in a video. And the first question that has come up a lot lately is, when are you going to be putting fish into the 1600 gallon system? Well, there's a, no definite date on when I'm going to be putting fish into the system. I'm still trying to get uh, everything assembled fully. I have a lot of other testing to do. The bracing system on the 720 gallon tank is under test right now. And until I get all that stuff completed, I won't be able to put fish in the tank. But I will say once I get to the point of putting salt into the tank, we're probably going to be pretty close. I'm going to target a date right now, and this is only a target. It's nothing, not to say anything for sure, but I'm kind of hoping sometime in September that I will be ready to at least be starting to, you know, get salt in the tank and at least put a couple of fish in. It's not going to be anything major. I'm going to take this very slow. Um, just because once I get a few things in here, I've got to make sure that I have all the equipment that I need to start off. And once all that stuff is finally all connected and completed, then I'll be able to start putting a little bit more effort and energy into getting all the livestock for these tanks. And it's going to take a long time before I stock up fish and corals in this just because of the size of these tanks. I want to really take my time and be a little picky and choosy with what I get. And that leads me into the next question, of course, which is how is the bracing on the 720 gallon system working? Well, let's go over there and take a look at the tank real quick and talk about it. The bracing on the 720 gallon tank has been completed for a few days now. I put the last screws in the other day, which there'll be another video that talks about the end of it and the final assembly part. I honestly prefer not to think about it right now because it was a, a torturous nightmare completing it between the two tanks but it's over the tanks about three quarters of the way full this is the greatest amount of water i wanted to put in this tank right now reason being i don't have drain line bulkheads or plumbing reinstalled yet i still have to finish narrowing my walking platform install it just to see how it fits and then I'm going to go ahead and all the L brackets I put on this, I'm going to just hit them with a quick coat of paint just to give them one extra level of protection really quick. And I have to do that before I reinstall my walking platform. Once the walking platform is reinstalled, I can go ahead and dry fit my plumbing. I've already got all the plumbing fittings that I need. In the meantime though, uh, I can't say whether or not the bracing system is successful or not. Uh, I'm going to reserve saying anything on it until we get a more complete test, which means I want this tank completely full, the way it's going to run, and have full water in it. I could say at the moment the tank still has water in it, which I haven't seen any type of bowing or issues as of yet. It's only been a couple of days though, and I need to let this take its time and soak for at least a couple of weeks. In order to take this tank and get it filled up, I went ahead and drained the 480 gallon into this and then lowered the level down in my sumps along with a, a little bit of my RO water that I had in storage. Go ahead and talk about another question I've been getting a lot on the 1600 gallon system. Ah, the 480 gallon tank. Well. It is drained, although it might seem in the camera at least that there's a bit of a line, and that's just a line of dirt from where the water was when I drained this down. It left a little bit of a film on the glass, but I'm not worried about it. This tank will get filled back up in probably the next couple of weeks. But I'm going to use the opportunity of this tank being drained to complete the aquascaping process. And what do I mean by that? Because I mean, obviously the tank's aquascaped already. There is one missing component though, and it's a question I get a lot, and it's are you gonna add sand into these tanks? And the answer for that is yes, but only in the 480 gallon tank. 
the 720 gallon tank is just simply too deep to effectively put a sand bed in there and be able to keep it clean. The other reason being that I plan on keeping a lot of puffers, potentially triggers, large wrasses, large angelfish, all things that would love for the most part to eat a cleanup crew for your sand such as even sand sifting starfish, all the crabs, the snails, sea cucumbers, and with the amount of waste that's going to be generated in that tank, I'd rather just keep a really heavy water flow in the 720 gallon tank. But I also want to keep a nice sand bed because I always love the natural look of sand. I love a lot of the corals that like to sit on the sand and I love a lot of the small wrasses that love to have an environment where they have the ability to bury themselves in sand. The type of sand I get, I will say right now, yeah, I, I'm going with Carib Sea. I've just used that sand for a really long time. It's readily available. I'm just getting dry sand. There definitely be a big storm of dust if I go dumping tons of sand into the 480. So while it's drained, I'm gonna go ahead. I have already got a sand order in with my local fish store. And when that comes in, I've got three different grain sizes I went with. I'm gonna wash them, mix them as I kind of see fit. I plan to have a very heavy flow over here. So some of the heavier grade, I'm going to concentrate more in this area where the smaller stuff, I'm probably gonna to try to keep more in this half of the tank. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll have it in and get it into the tank so that it could be refilled. That's the plan with sand for the 1600 gallon system as of right now. And I'll of course keep everybody updated as progress on that goes forward. So let's talk about the next question back in the fish room. Another question that has come in, just kind of a general question, has been about the camera I use to film heating with fire part two. And I use a thermal imaging camera to do that. Now, I know I did have at least one comment where someone did not believe that I actually have a thermal camera. And I want to say that it was not a phone app I used for that. It was a genuine thermal imaging camera that I have and that is what I was using to film that video. As a matter of fact, let's change the thermal mode. Now you can see me in thermal, I'll also kind of swing back and forth between this and regular camera shots so you can see. But just to kind of show everybody, I have a glass here that's just filled with ice. Now IR cameras cannot see through glass, it does deflect it. But I will go ahead and you can see my hand here and my fingers probably are showing a different color because I touched some ice. And I'll just demonstrate here that as you hold something like an ice cube, you can see a vast difference in the temperature of your hand or wherever else the water is dripping. And that is kind of how I'm showing that this thermal camera is real and it's not some kind of phone app. Uh, another thing I can demonstrate here really quick is I have a little block of wood here which is obviously room temperature. And if I put my hand against it here for a few seconds, and let it go, you're probably going to see my handprint here. I can't see it, it just looks like a little wet spot, but you should be able to see that temperature difference in the wood. Just want to say about the thermal camera real quick, if anybody's interested in seeing uh, something imaged with the thermal camera that's aquarium related, you know, let me know in the comments down below. I, I could definitely do some thermal imaging of things like pumps or lights so that you guys can see what kind of temperatures are running at. Definitely as I get further along in this build and I get things going, I am I'm going to be using the camera more just to kind of search things out, find out what's generating the most heat in my fish room. And I just want to say, let me go ahead and switch off a of thermal. And you can see me now, I still have my glass of ice here and the two by four. Uh, let me go ahead and grab the camera here so you can see it. So this is my thermal imaging camera. It actually attaches to an Android phone. So I'll give you guys a close up here. It is a Therm app camera. 
and there is an Android application to drive it. You need to have the camera, of course, to run the actual device, otherwise the app doesn't work. But this is my thermal imaging camera. Another question I get a lot is when is the Heating with Fire Part 3 going to come out? As everybody wants to see whether or not this heating system using my hot water tank is going to work. And I'll say this, I really wanted to have it tested already, but I feel that I would be doing kind of a disservice to everybody that's viewing this if I didn't test it with all the tanks running and a way to accurately measure the temperature as it fluctuates on the entire system. I just need to know how effective it is at heating the whole system. I could have done it partially and just tried to heat the 480 and the sumps, but I just don't think that would really be as scientific of a test for me to know how well is it going to heat this whole thing. And even if I show how well it works with that volume of water, well, I'm not going to really have good results for myself, which means I'm going to have to stop heating the tank let it all cool back down to room temperature which is going to take some time and then retest again with everything full. Another question that has come up of course is the DIY needle wheel that I built for the protein skimmer. I have been asked a couple of times when am I going to be making that video. There was a ton of people that wanted to see that video and I will say it is going to be made uh, I want to first though, before I show everyone how I made the DIY needle wheel impeller, I first want to prove that it actually works. Uh, that means I have to wait until I get salt water in this tank and I can actually fire it up properly and get this skimmer rolling and I can see just how the bubbles are coming out of it. I'll then complete my second DIY needle wheel and test a couple of them out for everybody so you guys can see the differences between that a standard impeller. So stay tuned, that one will definitely be coming up. The final question I, I'm going to address today on the video is what am I going to use for water flow in the 1600 gallon system for the 480 display and the 720 gallon display. I'll start off by saying we have the refill hammerhead return pump which is probably giving about at least 2000 gallons per hour of water flow to each one of these tanks which is kind of a good little start of water flow but obviously there's going to be supplementary water flow need. The plan right now, at least as I see it at the moment, is I'm going to get two large water flow pumps for the 480 gallon tank, possibly gyres. Haven't decided fully yet, but that is a good possibility. I'm going to start off by putting both of them on this far end of the tank that's close to the fish room because I want to try and keep the really heavy flow on the far end of the tank. The 720 gallon on the other hand, I haven't fully decided on the vent manufacturer for those pumps either, but I do know this, even though it's going to be a fish only system at least to kind of start off and might get some coral, I really want to put really high flow into that tank. I want to keep the tank stirred up. I don't want to allow detritus to get in there. I'm looking for probably putting at least 8,000 gallons of water flow into that. And I know a lot of pumps are capable of putting out about 4,000 or so gallons per hour at least. I know some of them do far more than that. I want something controllable for each one of these tanks. And if, once I get salt in the tanks and I get a little further forward in the system, that's probably going to be one of the first things that you start to see come in is I'll try out a couple of these pumps, see how they work. If I like them, I'll buy additional ones as needed. Those are all the questions I had for today, everybody. I want to say again, thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate all the viewership from everybody and all the positive comments. Of course, if you like today's video, please go ahead, hit that like button, let me know that you like today's video. And if you dislike the video, well, go ahead and hit that dislike button too. Let's me know how I'm doing with my content on my channel. And of course, if you want to see more videos on my 1600 gallon system, I have a whole bunch of them out there as I've been kind of working through this in 2017. And I will be putting out more content, so if you're interested in seeing more videos on my 1600 gallon system and you want to follow along with my progress, 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Put out content at least once a week and try to change up topics and keep things fresh every week. So thanks again everybody for watching and I will see you on the next video.